This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my recipe for Parmesan puffs. These savory bites are a really great addition to your tea tray. They're really easy to put together. In fact, you can put them together in advance and put them in your freezer until you're ready to use them. And once you broil them off, they're just bubbly and golden brown and loaded with Parmesan cheese flavor. Now to make these puffs, we start with some sliced bread. Now I'm using just sliced white bread today, but you could use anything that you have on hand and would like to use. And then I'm also using a two inch a round cookie cutter. Again, you could use a square cookie cutter. You could make it smaller. You could make it larger. It's totally up to you. Now with this size bread, it looks like I'll be able to get two rounds out of each slice. Now with this two inch round, I'm going to be using 12 slices of bread. So I'm going to get two dozen rounds out of this. Now I am going to have some of these pieces of bread that look like this left over, but I don't throw these out. What I actually do is put them back in the freezer. And then when I need to make bread crumbs, I take them out of the freezer and uh, put them through my food processor and it grinds them up nice and fine. Now I have all my little bread rounds out on a baking sheet. And you'll notice I don't have any parchment on the baking sheet because I'm gonna pop these under the broiler and uh, we wouldn't want that parchment to catch on fire. Now the next thing I wanna do is take a little bit of butter and this is just a tablespoon or so that I've softened. And with my spreading knife, I'm just gonna lightly butter one side of each of the bread rounds. Now that I've buttered each of the little bread rounds, I'm gonna pop these under the broiler and I'm gonna get them uh, nicely browned on top. Now it's important when you're using a broiler that you have your shelf on the highest um, level, closest to the element, and that you watch them because these will turn um, black on you really quickly and we just want them to be a nice golden brown. Now, once they're nice and golden brown like this, we're gonna take and turn them over. So the buttered side is now gonna be on the bottom. Now I'm gonna be putting my mixture all together in a small bowl using a wooden spoon. If you wanted to use a food processor or a mixer, you could absolutely use that too. To start with, I'm getting eight ounces of cream cheese. Um, and I've just had this sitting out as long as I've been making my little bread rounds. So it's still cold, but it's just to have the chill taken off just a little bit. And I'm gonna put this into my bowl. I'm gonna use my wooden spoon and I'm just gonna sort of mash the cream cheese just a little bit. Now I'm gonna be adding a little bit of mayonnaise to the cream cheese just to sort of thin it out a little bit. I'm using a light mayonnaise and I'm gonna add three tablespoons. I'm gonna mix that in. Then I have three scallions and I'm actually gonna split these down the middle and chop them up really finely. So once I run my blade through them once, I'm gonna keep running my blade through them until they get nice and fine. So you can see how fine those pieces are. And then I'm gonna add my green onion to my cream cheese. Now to make this just a little interesting, I'm gonna put just three little drops of hot sauce in the mixture. Now the last thing I'm gonna add is half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Now you can either use grated or shredded. Today I'm using shredded. And now I'm just gonna use my wooden spoon and really make sure to get the cheese and the onions really mixed in well with that cream cheese. Now in the recipe, you'll notice it says three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese. And I've put half a cup in with the cream cheese. I'm gonna take the other quarter cup and I'm gonna put it on a small saucer like this. Now we're gonna start putting our puffs together. So I'm gonna take one of the bread rounds. I'm gonna get a nice healthy dollop of the cream cheese and I'm gonna kind of mound it up a little bit actually like this, and then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna roll it 
in that Parmesan cheese just to coat the top. So you'll see I'm just mounding that cream cheese on. Again, it's not flat. You can see it's kind of got a little bit of a dome on it. Then I'll take it and dip it in the, in the uh, Parmesan cheese like that and put it back on my baking sheet. Now, if you wanted to make these little Parmesan puffs ahead of time, what you can do is assemble them to this point and then take this whole sheet and put it in your freezer for a few hours until these are frozen solid. Then you can just take them off the baking sheet and put them in a uh, food storage bag or some sort of freezer container and you can leave them in your uh, freezer for a couple of months. Then when you're ready to serve them, just take out as many as you want, put them on a baking sheet, but let them sit out at room temperature for just about 15 minutes. That way they kind of defrost a little bit and then you'll pop them under the broiler and serve them just as if you'd just finished making them. Well, today I am gonna go ahead and cook all of these. So I'm gonna take my whole sheet and I'm gonna pop it under the broiler. Now I do wanna make sure and watch them because what I'm looking for is for these to puff and get nice and golden brown. Now, so these get nicely browned, many times while I'm broiling, I'll actually rotate the pan because sometimes the broiler is not quite as even as I would like. So you'll see I just kind of move the pan around and get, the, get them right under the element so that they'll brown nice and evenly. Now you can see how nice and golden brown these are. These look great and they're ready to serve. Well, if you'd like to try some of these Parmesan puffs at home, just go to our website and visit the Come for Tea show notes and I'll have the recipe there for you. And as always, if you have any questions, please send me an email. I'll see you next time.